Hello Gems, I am here at NASA today because I was invited to a NASA social media influencer event. I can't believe those words just came out of my mouth. So I am here at the NASA press accreditation office and we are almost checking in. So we're here to um, cover the crew seven mission to the ISS and this crew has four people in it from four completely different countries. The commander of this is a woman and I am so excited to take you along with me on this awesome event. I am a huge space fan. I always have been and I am just I can't believe I'm here. So let's check it out. Let's see what this event is going to be. We are on the bus. We are going to our best social event. We are here right in front of the VAB. I can't believe I'm here. We're heading back into the NASA News Center. I just wanted to point out this is where all the news organizations are to come and cover the launches. Over there is CBS and there's Reuters. That's all I can read from here, but how cool, right? Good morning everyone, my name is Megan Cruz and thank you for watching NASA's SpaceX Crew-7 social panel. Crew-7 will launch to the International Space Station. It's the first time in a single launch that each person represents a different space agency. So you have Jasmine Mogbelli of NASA, you have Andreas Mogensen of the European Space Agency, Satoshi Furukawa, JAXA, and also Konstantin Borisev of uh, Roscosmos. So today's audience here in the room is a group of digital content creators visiting NASA's Kennedy Space Center for a NASA social, is what we call it. They'll get a behind the scenes tour and they're now getting to meet this interesting panel of people I have up there uh, with me here today. So to my left, we have Tom Angler. He's the Center Planning and Development Director at Kennedy Space Center. Then next to him, we have Kristen Fogg, Deputy Chief Scientist for NASA's Human Research Program based at Johnson Space Center. Then we have Luca Parmitano, who's an ESA astronaut, and Sam Testa, Recovery Director for the Commercial Crew Program <clears throat> SpaceX missions based here at Kennedy. So, in a linear way, it, we just don't. We, we feel a lot of things at the same time. Even if, you, even if I asked you, hey, what did you feel the first time you saw the, the sea? You wouldn't be able to tell me one thing. You, you would have to tell me about the smell the feeling of the wind on your on your skin, the breeze, the, the salt in the air, so many different things, the light, the sparkling in the water. So it, it's really hard to describe feelings. What I can do is very quickly take you with me inside the spacecraft. You have to imagine that I flew on the Soyuz and the Soyuz is very, very quiet right before the launch. It's almost, we listen to some music before the launch and then it becomes very quiet and uh, we're just waiting for the signals. We don't have a, there is no countdown in Russian, but there are some keywords that we expect to tell us that it's about to happen. And there is this tension as the spacecraft kind of sway with the wind, and you, you know something is happening, and you're strapped in. Um, you are, from a physical point of view, you're, you know, you're not moving. But then from an emotional point of view, I remember it felt like being two different people at the same time. There was Luca the astronaut, I had been trained for two years to, for that moment, for the launch, and I knew every single aspect of the spacecraft, I knew my checklist, I knew what I had to do. And then there was a six-year-old Luca next to me, and that was a kid that had dreamed of being an astronaut for 30 years, and couldn't quite believe that it was happening. So, as soon as the, as soon as the, rocket becomes alive, it's almost, it's, it's, it's trembling because you cannot, you cannot hear the noise, it's behind you, 40 meters behind you. 
but the vibration travels through the structure and they hit your seat and you start shaking with it. And then you have this giant hand pushing you down into the seat, and that's acceleration. It goes through two phases. The first one peaks at 4.3 Gs, so four and a half times your body weight pressing down on you. It's not a lot, but it's a lot more than we're used to. And then there is a moment of release at the first stage drops down and, and you start accelerating again. It's a little less in the second, the second part. And it pushes you up and again, um, it's incredibly steady. The launch on the, on, the, on the Soyuz is very, very, very steady, very steady acceleration, not a lot of vibrations. And again, you have this uh, professional side of you just uh, making sure that all the, all the check marks are hit, all the, all the timings. You know when the fairings are going to go away, you know when um, some of the markers are going to gonna happen, and make sure that all timings are correct. Uh, and then you're just marveling at the same time, is this really happening? On a, in a way, it feels like the hundred, hundreds of simulations you've done where everything always went wrong and everything is going right. So that's, that's a nice change. <laughs> and, uh, and then you're marveling that it's really happening. And then, eight minutes and 48 seconds later, it's the main engine cutoff. Uh, in Russian, it's called Kontakt Artelien. It's the separation from all the stages, and all at once you have a pencil in your hand and you let it go and, and it floats. And in the Russian tradition, we have little little toy uh, toy animals brought by the, the, the commander or the, the, or the other crew members as microgravity indications, and they start floating. And sure enough, you're, you're in orbit, and it just happened, 8 minutes and 48 seconds, you were at zero ground, zero speed, and now you're traveling 28,000 kilometers an hour, uh, 17,500 miles an hour, and you're 150 uh, miles in the sky. And, uh, and I couldn't wait. I we, we had little covers for the for the windows. I took that off, and I looked outside, and I saw my first orbital sunrise. Uh, we launched at one o'clock in the morning, but Eight minutes later, we were in, in Kazakhstan, but eight minutes later, we were already in Japan. And it was, it was a sunrise. And I cannot describe it because there are no words. Simply, there are no words in the languages that we have developed because our words describe things that we have experienced. And we haven't experienced anything like that. But I saw it, I turned around, and I saw that my crewmates who had already flown, they were not looking outside. They were looking at me. They were looking at me because I was the only one that had not flown yet. And I saw this big smile on their faces, and I realized that that was the same smile that I had, because it was like this amazing grace and beauty in front of us, and just beautiful. So, hard to describe in words, but I hope uh, I took you with me for just eight minutes and 43 seconds. So here we are at the countdown clock for Crew 7. This is going to be launching on Friday, August 25th at 3.49 a.m. And I'll be here watching the countdown clock. Very, very excited. Yay! We are here at the Vehicle Assembly Building, or the VAB. We're about to go inside, people. I just can't even. my god there is no way that i could ever convey to you how huge this place is this is very impressive this building was built in the 60s uh, for apollo um, they put it up in about three or four years which is amazing um, it's been used for apollo then it was transitioned for use of the shuttle where they stacked the shuttle with its uh, booster rockets and external tank and now uh, it's getting transformed into support the SLS uh, and Orion vehicles. This is so great. We're getting a private tour 
of the VAB. This is not something that you can do um, as a visitor at the Space Center. We had to get special uh, permission and the group leader had to fill out a form and stuff. I feel so fancy. This is a wall of signatures of all the astronauts, and I am just speechless. This is everybody that has contributed to the space shuttle program. And I mean, this is a lot of people. We have so much to thank them for. This is just, again, just speechless. Here's a big sign for the Artemis mission. This is, of course, the mission that's going to bring us back to the moon so that we can start building a base there. And that is step one to getting us to Mars. So straight ahead of me, you can see the crawler. That is what takes the rockets to the launch pad. And it has been a dream of mine to see one up close just for a really, really long time. This is so cool. So this thing holds hundreds of millions of pounds he was saying so it can carry a whole lot you can see the wheels on either side they are tank wheels so that is what facilitates taking the rockets from the vehicle assembly building to the launch pad so it's really windy in here i hope you guys can hear me man my hair just really didn't stay today it's like in the 90s but I just wanted to say this is one of the coolest things I've ever done in my life you see you know this all the time in space movies and I just cannot convey the history and the amazing job that these people do every single day to push humanity forward they're talking a lot about um Unity, because this uh, mission I'm covering here, Crew 7 is the first mission with four different astronauts from four different countries. There's United States, Japan, Denmark, and Russia. So this is really a great example of how science and curiosity can bring people together and make peace and just stop all this dumb nonsense, you know? So we're on our way back to the news auditorium where we had the stream earlier, and we're going to have a special guest. So let's see. Continuing our tour of NASA, we are in here looking at some of the vehicles that help facilitate spaceflight. There are a bunch of uh, helicopters in here and they are very cool. You can see there are a lot of jets in here and other vehicles that help with spaceflight. Um, there's a Star Fighters Aerospace over there. They're actually partners with NASA and they are third parties. Now we're at the International Space Station Processing Facility and we're gonna learn a little bit more about how they handle um, life on the space station and we're gonna talk to a few subject matter experts. Hyperspectral imaging system whose main function is to identify plant stress 
very early on before the human eye can see it. Um, and then using AI algorithms, collecting large databases, trying to get predictive uh, understanding of when we start detecting something, what that may be indicative, what type of stress. Is it overwater, underwater, salt stress, etc. Here's some of our microgreens planted as kind of a treat for you all to look at. Um, and so microgreens are very nutritious, very delicious. We're also collaborating with USDA studying these. They're very And the next part of our tour here is we are in the place where they study space plant biology and work out how to grow plants in space, what foods the astronauts can eat in space on the ISS. And I think that this is pretty cool. I spy with my little eye. A pretty... Um, kind of older computer actually i'm just really like looking at all of their um technology and it looks like they're running windows 10. Now we are headed into the Launch Control Center, or as they call it, the LCC. There's a really cool display over here talking about Rocco A. Patron. He was responsible for the planning, development, and activation of Launch Complex 39, which was the Apollo Saturn V launch site. And this launch complex is one of the most famous in the world. This is where the Crew 7 is also going to take off from. They have a, a lot of really cool things from his amazing life, his NASA hard hat. I think that's so cool. We owe him a lot. You can see here there is this memorial to the Apollo 1 astronauts, White, Grissom, and Chappie, and they all unfortunately passed away in an accident. The Launch Control Center is where launch teams come together, where responsibility belongs to each of us, where go or no go is a commitment based on preparation, systems knowledge, and vigilance. This is a quote from Charlie Blackwell Thompson, and I love that. That is so cool. I'm having such a good time. This wall has these really cool plaques for all of the space missions that have uh, launched from here. And the first one was Apollo 4 on November the 9th, 1967. I feel like one of my takeaways from this room especially is that there are a lot more space missions from here than I ever really considered. This entire wall behind me, it goes all the way down to the end of the room. These are all of the space missions that have been launched here from Kennedy Space Center. And I just think this is amazing. We have so many people to thank for techno technological innovation. And this, I just feel so inspired by these people that have a curiosity about things and they achieve the absolute impossible. It's so cool. I was specifically looking for the Challenger plaque here. The Challenger disaster is one of my first memories in my entire life. And it's one of the things that got me interested in space, actually, because after that happened, they made a lot of changes and improvements. And that was the worst loss of life uh, in 
the space program, I would say. So this is a really nice plaque to memorialize the incredibly brave people who were on that mission. For this last part of our tour, they took us over to see the observation area for the launch pads. So over here, we've got one and you can see the rocket is all prepped and ready to go on that launch tower. And then you can see underneath, you see that um, kind of opening under there that is the flame trench. That's where the flames come out from <laughs> the launch. So this is Launch Complex 39 Pad A. And this is where Crew 7 is taking off from on Friday. Over here, we have a launch pad 39B, and you can see those three really large towers over there. Those are lightning towers, and then next to those is a water tower. I'm back at my hotel. That wraps it up for today. What an amazing day. I can't even begin to explain how much that meant to me, actually. I've never attended a media event before, and they told us that they got uh, over 2,000 applicants, and I think that there was 18 of us. So um, I'm honored. I am seriously honored. That was so much fun. But we still have the launch coming up. So if you like this, please like, subscribe, and share. I will post the launch next, and I'll put it in the comments and a playlist and all that stuff for your convenience. Have a great day.